The countdown round competition is a single elimination bracket tournament where the top four seeds will have a bye in the first round. I will read a question while it is being projected on the monitor in front of the students and also on these large screens for the audience. Should I misspeak when reading a problem, something that has a 100% chance of occurring, the problem showing on the students' monitors and the audience screen will be considered the official problem. Students will have 45 seconds to solve the problem after it appears on the monitor. There will be a green 45 second timer bar visible at the top of the screen. The timer bar will change to yellow when there are 10 seconds remaining on the clock. Competitors, this is important. Once you have solved the problem, press your buzzer. I will call on the first person who presses the buzzer to announce his or her answer. Do not announce your answer until I have called on you. If you answer without buzzing, your answer will not be recognized until you buzz in. Once I call on you, you will have three seconds to complete your answer. Your opponent may continue working while you are answering the question. If you answer incorrectly, your opponent will have the remainder of the 45 seconds to buzz in and answer the question. Whoever answers the most out of five questions correctly, which is not necessarily three out of five, will win the round and progress to the next round. Should the score be tied after five questions, we will begin the sudden victory procedure. It is exactly like sudden death, but not nearly as scary sounding. The next student to answer a question correctly in the matchup will win that matchup. Good luck to each of you, and now, Let's get on with the first round. Our first pair of students to complete will be our ninth and eighth place finalists, as announced earlier. Suyash Pandit and Eric Shen, please come forward and be seated at the competitors' table. All right, to give you a chance to get comfortable with your microphones and get used to your buzzers, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourselves and ask you a couple of questions. So, Suyash, did I say your name right? Uh, Suyash. Suyash, okay, thank you. I'm so very sorry. As someone whose name is constantly misspelled, it's something <laughs> I'm very sensitive about. Uh, tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. So, I go to Cedar Park Middle School in Portland, and I'm in eighth grade. Oh, awesome. Now, it says here that you visited St. Petersburg, Russia in 2016. Mm -hmm. It says that two months later, you visited St. Petersburg, Florida. Yes. It also says in 2018, you visited Vienna, Virginia, uh -huh. and then the country, Vienna. So we know you're good at math, uh -huh. but here is a geography question. Yeah. Today, you're in Orlando, Florida, uh -huh. but soon, you will be in Orlando, A, Kansas, B, Kentucky, C, Oklahoma, or D, West Virginia? C. Oh, I'm sorry you didn't buzz in. <laughs> <laughs> that is the correct answer. This was a bit of a reverse trick question in that every city is named Orlando in those places. So congratulations. Oh. Uh, let's go ahead and give your buzzer a try. All right, excellent. All right, Eric Shen. Tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I go to Miller Middle School and I'm in eighth grade. And I see that you are from San Jose, California. Yes. Are you paying attention to the hockey playoffs? No. <laughs> if you were, you might be interested to know that your team, the San Jose Sharks, is on its way to the Stanley Cup Finals if it can defeat the St. Louis Blues. Okay. <laughs> that is the appropriate amount of enthusiasm for the National Hockey League. <laughs> All right, there is something unique about you that I think is amazing, that I just absolutely love. You had two extra teeth. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a true statement, right? Yeah. So were they wisdom teeth? No. That's good, because that would probably give you an unfair advantage. Did you bring your teeth with you? Unfortunately, I did not. All right, well, I wish you luck anyway. Okay. Uh, let's give your buzzer a try. All right, guys. I'm excited for you. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Our first question is, 
Leighton went to a party with 10 people and spoke with every possible pair of attendees. In each case, at least one of the pair he talked to liked wallabies. If Leighton likes wallabies, what is the greatest number of people at the party that did not like wallabies? Yes, Suyash. One. The answer is one person, correct. <laughs> Our score is currently Suyash one, Eric zero. Here is question number two. An astronaut lines up all 25 plants in her space garden. The plants are arranged so that the leftmost plant is the shortest of the plants, and every plant after the first one is three centimeters taller than the plant to its immediate left. If the height of the tallest plant is equal to the sum of the heights of the middle plant and the plant to the immediate left of the middle plant, how many centimeters tall, yes, Eric? 51. Uh, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. How many centimeters tall is the middle plant? Ten seconds. Zuyash. 42. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct answer is 39 centimeters. I don't think there's a person in this room who understood what was going on with that question. I think all of us. I began to have a panic attack as I read that question to you. The score remains unchanged. Suyash with one, Eric with zero. Here is question number three. In the figure shown, the interior lines intersect the sides of the large rectangle at 45 degree angles and divide each side into segments of equal length. Yes, yes. 48. 48 score inches is the correct answer. That gives Suyash two. Eric's still looking to get on the board. Here is question number four. What is the base 10 value of the base five numeral 31313? Yes, Eric. 783. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Yes, yes. 833. I'm sorry, the correct answer is 2083. That is the end of our match, and Suyash, you will be advancing to the next round. Congratulations. Thank you, Eric. Please welcome to the table Ethan Zhao and Ram Goal. Uh, good morning, fellas. Ethan, let's start with you. Tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. Uh, I go to Basis Independent McLean in, in Virginia, and I'm in eighth grade. Now, I understand that you were a national competitor last year. Yeah. And you were 13th place, which means you just missed the countdown round. So what was your secret for getting into the top 12 this year? Uh, I don't think there is a secret. <laughs> That is a beautiful answer. Thank you. Let's test your buzzer. Excellent. Ram, did I pronounce your last name correctly? Oh, uh, you didn't pronounce either correctly. What's your correct name? Is it Ram? Ram, yeah. Son, all right, very good, Ram. Ram, I'm terribly sorry. A round of applause for Ram, everybody. <laughs> Tell us uh, where you go to school and what grade you're in, sir. I'm, I, I'm from Oregon, I'm homeschooled, and I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. It says here that one of your hobbies is that you like games. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Are you more into board games or video games? Both. <laughs> that is the correct answer. Very good. <laughs> what do you play in these days? What do you like to play when you're playing a tabletop game? Um, cards. Excellent. And what's your favorite video game at the moment? Survive. I have no idea what that is because I'm so old. That's amazing. 
Well, I wish you both the best of luck, and let's get into your competition round. Uh, oh, hey, wait a minute. Let's test your buzzer first. I have written down in enormous letters here. Test the buzzer, test the buzzer. Don't forget to test the buzzer. <laughs> they worked. I mean, these notes are more effective if I don't give away the secrets. In any event, your buzzer works. Let's go. Here is your first question. There are 24 distinct four-digit numbers that can be formed with the digits four, eight, seven, and six. What is the average of the least and the greatest? Yes, Ethan. The 6,000. I'm sorry, your time has expired. What is the average of the least and the greatest of these numbers? Ten seconds. Yes, Ron. Six, seven, two, one. Six, seven, two, one is the correct answer. That gives Rom one, Ethan's still looking to get on the board, and here is question number two. Suppose n and 4n each represent a three-digit positive integer and that the sum of the digits of n is 12. What is the greatest possible value of 4n? Yes, Rom. 3720. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Yes, Ethan. 984. 984 is correct. We are all tied up at one as we go to question three. At a clearance sale, Lon bought a $10 hat at a 10% discount, a $20 shirt at a 20% discount, and a $40 pair of pants at a 40% discount. If Pauline bought the same hat, shirt, and pants all at a uniform discount and ended up paying the same amount of money as Lon, yes, Ethan? 30. 30% 30 is correct. <laughs> Ethan has two, Rom has one, and here is question four. A plane contains two diagonals of a solid regular octahedron with edge length five centimeters. What is the area in square centimeters of the portion of that plane that lies in the octahedron's interior? Yes, Ron. 25. 25 is correct. This is very exciting. We are all tied up at two apiece as we head into question five. Astro was born weighing two pounds. At six months old, Astro weighed eight pounds. At every subsequent six month anniversary, Astro's weight increased by half as many pounds as it did in the preceding six month period. How many pounds will Astro weigh when he turns 10 years old? Yes, Ethan. 10. Uh, I'm sorry, that's wrong. How many pounds will Astro weigh when he turns 10 years old? Express your answer to the nearest whole number. Yes, Ron? Four. I'm sorry, the correct answer is 14 pounds. And I believe we are going to a sudden victory round as we are tied at two. All right, you guys, you got this. Here we go. Here is your first sudden victory question. What is the value of the absolute value of the quantity, yes, Rom? Negative five sevenths. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. What is the value of the absolute unit of the quantity five sevenths minus pi, minus pi, minus five sevenths? Express your answer as a common fraction. Yes, Ethan. Negative 10 over seven. Negative 10 over seven is correct. <laughs> That was incredibly intense, I'm sweating. Um, let us now welcome our next competitors. Welcome Samuel Wang and Karthik Vajula. Samuel, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes. Yes. 
because my friend Garrett Wang was on Star Trek Voyager, so that's how I got it right. Very good, I'm proud of myself. Please, if you would, tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. Um, I go to Basis Independent McLean, and I'm in eighth grade. Um, you told us that you are disorganized. Yes. But you can find everything. Yes. Me too. <laughs> if that's the case, are you sure you're not just creating order out of the disorganized world around you? Maybe. Quick follow-up question. Did I just blow your mind? Kind of. All right. I will take it. I'll take whatever I can get. Uh, let's give your buzzer a try. Excellent. Karthik, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes. Yes! I'm doing so much better than I thought I would do based on rehearsal yesterday. Uh, tell us where you go to school and uh, what grade you're in. I go to Fairview Middle School and I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. We've got a little woo for Fairview Middle School in the back of the room. Awesome. Uh, you said you could give a 20-minute presentation on something I find extremely interesting, Taco Bell menu options. <laughs> All right. I think the best menu option at Taco Bell is actually going to In-N-Out Burger instead. Am I correct? <laughs> well, I'm vegetarian, so I don't think that would work as well. Oh, <laughs> an excellent answer. That is a great answer. Uh, what, what do you like to get at the Taco Bell menu? Uh, I, get, I like to get a crunch wrap with beans, onions, and lettuce. Taco Bell, if you're watching at home, I believe I have found you a spokesman. <laughs> Uh, well, good luck to both of you. Give your buzzer a try, please, Karthik. All right, great, here we go. Here is question number one. Between 1968 and 1982, the world record for the men's 100-meter dash decreased from 10.03 seconds to 10.00 seconds. If the record would have continued to decrease linearly with time, in what year would the record have reached Usain Bolt's actual 2009 time of 9.58 seconds? Yes, Sam. 2178. 2178 is correct. <laughs> that gives Sam one and Karthik with zero. And here is question number two. Bobo has three balloons, one of which contains a prize. Bobo randomly selects one of the balloons to give away. Yes, Sam. One over three. One over three is the correct answer. <laughs> That gives Sam two. Karthik's still looking to get on the board. Here is question number three. If u equals two to the fifth minus two, v equals three to the fifth minus three, yes, Karthik? 30. 30 is the correct answer. <laughs> Sam with two, Karthik with one. Here is question number four. Let P be the probability that in 10 flips of a fair coin, it never lands tails up. Let Q be the probability, yes, Karthik? 45. 45 is correct. <laughs> We're all tied up at two apiece as we head to question number five. If the quantity 25 to the 11th plus 16 to the fifth squared minus the quantity 25 to the 11th minus 16 to the fifth squared equals 10. Yes, Sam. 22. 22 is correct. <laughs> Congratulations, Sam moves on. Our next two competitors are Rich Wang and Alan Kapler. Come on up. Hello, welcome. Rich, did I say your name correctly? Uh, yeah. Yes! Uh, tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. Uh, I go to Coal Valley Middle School, and uh, I'm in eighth grade. It says here that your career aspirations are to be a machine learning engineer. When did you become interested in working in artificial intelligence? Well, um, I've always been like interested in like the way that like, like robots can like function without people have constantly give them instructions but I guess it kind of started around fifth grade, maybe. That is amazing. 
Uh, well, I for one welcome our new machine learned robot overlords. And I would like to remind them that as a member of the entertainment community, I am very good at communicating their message of oppression to the masses. <laughs> Let's give your uh, buzzer a try. Excellent. Alan Kapler, tell us where you go to school. I'm presuming I said your name correctly. Yes. yes. Well, tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. Okay, this is so scary. <laughs> I go to Davidson Academy Online. Yes. I'm in eighth grade. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I live in Hillsborough, Oregon. That's awesome. Alan, you've got this. Alan, I don't think it's a big secret to tell you that everyone who is up here on this stage is nervous and you have the courage to admit it and I really admire that about you. <laughs> so, you said that the thing you were most looking forward to this year is pin trading. So, I'm going to ask you a deeply controversial question. Which state has the best pin this year? This, if you think it's just a question of economics, then California asks... That is the correct answer! <laughs> because that's where I'm from and I get to decide. Continue with the second half of your answer. Because they didn't allow people to get their pins without giving maybe three or four of their own. Oh, California, I love the way we think! That's amazing. Good job, you guys. I'll see you in traffic on the five. Uh, Alan, let's give your buzzer a try. All right, you guys. Here we go. Good luck to both of you. Your first question is, James is reading a series of astronomy books. The first book in the series has 763 pages, and today, James began reading it at a rate of 25 pages per day. He plans to order the second book, which will arrive exactly three weeks. Yes, Alan? Nine? Nine days is correct! Uh, Alan has one, Rich has yet to get on the board, and here is your question number two. For how many integers n is the value of n to the fourth minus 109n squared plus 900 negative? Yes, Rich? 89. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Yes, Alan? 890, no, oh, 790. Uh, time has expired, the correct answer is 12. It's okay, that question was on the Starfleet Academy entrance exam and I got it wrong too. Uh, that gives Alan with one, Rich with zero, and here is question number three. A square is inscribed in a right triangle as shown. If the vertices of the square divide the hypotenuse into segments of lengths three X and five, what is the value of X in units? Express your answer, yes, Rich. Root 15. Root 15 is correct. You have one point apiece, and here comes question number four. A ski store has 18 pairs of skis in its storeroom with no distinction between left and right skis. Yes, Rich? Four. Four is incorrect. There are six pairs each of brands X, Y, and Z. Gretchen repeatedly enters the storeroom and retrieves an individual ski without replacement. How many times must Gretchen retrieve an individual ski to guarantee that she has retrieved a complete pair of at least two brands of skis? Yes, Alan? 13. The correct answer is 15 times. We are still tied up at one as we come to question five. In the International Space Station Space Garden, Anne plants two, yes, Rich? 603. Uh, that is not correct. Anne plants 201 radish seeds, yes, Alan? 600, oh, oh. No, I'm sorry. Uh, the correct answer is 50 feet. Oh my gosh. This brings us to another sudden victory round. <laughs> uh, 
All right, guys, here comes your first sudden victory question. A bag of candies contains four times as many bright candies as it does clear candies. Buzz eats two thirds of the bright candies and half of the clear candies. What fraction of the candies that Buzz ate were clear? Express your answer as a common fraction. Yes, Alan. Three thirteenths. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Ten seconds. Yes, Rich. 16 over 19. I'm sorry, the correct answer is 3 over 19. Yeah. That's all right, you guys get another shot at it. Here we go with your second sudden victory question. No spoilers. Circe starts on a circular path at point A and walks 9 meters along diameter AD to point Y. Standing at point Y, Circe is 16 meters from point D. Next, she turns 90 degrees and walks until she reaches point Z on the circular path as shown. How many total meters does she walk from point A to point Z? Yes, Alan. 33. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Rich. 21. 21 is correct. <laughs> Congratulations, Rich. Thank you, Alan. Uh, please welcome back to the stage, Suyash Pandit, and please welcome to the stage, Jeff Lynn. Uh, Jeff, tell us where you are from, uh, and what grade you're in, and where you go to school. I'm from Massachusetts, and I go to Jonas Clark Middle School in Lexington, and I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. Now, my card here says you have trouble coming up with legitimate answers. So I'm going to ask you something interesting about yourself, and I want you to make up an answer. Uh, something interesting about yourself is uh, how many ducks do you own? Zero. <laughs> All right, that is correct. Let's give your buzzer a try. Suyush, welcome back. Let's give it a try. All right, you are all set. Good luck, fellas. Here is your first question. If P is a prime number, K is a positive integer, and P to the K is a factor of 20 factorial, what is the largest possible value of PK? Jeff. 34. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Suyash. 36. 36 is correct. Score in this round, Suyish is one, Jeff is uh, zero, and here is question number two. According to a poll taken at Johnson Middle School, exactly 80% of the students at the school have at least one pet, exactly 30% of the students have at least two pets, and exactly 5% have at least three pets. If no pets are shared among students, what is the least possible average number of pets per student? Express your answer as a decimal to the nearest hundredth. Suyash. 1.15. 1.15 is correct. Those 0.15 pets are just a mess to clean up after. 
Uh, that gives Suyesh two, uh, Jeff with zero, and here is question number three. A right circular cone is inscribed in a sphere. If the area of the base of the cone is 25% of the surface area of the sphere, what is the ratio of the volume of the cone to the volume of the sphere? Express your answer as a common fraction. Ten seconds. Yes, Jeff. One third. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Suyash. One half. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct answer is one quarter. Oh. <laughs> you were in the ballpark, but your spacecraft didn't make it to Mars. I'm sorry. Oh well. Uh, that gives Suyash two. Jeff was zero, and here's question number four. The reversal of a three-digit integer ABC is the integer CBA for digits A, B, and C. How many odd positive three-digit integers ABC have the property that ABC minus CBA equals 198? Suyash. Uh, 40. 40 is correct. <laughs> that is the end of the match. Suyash moves on. Please welcome back to the stage, Ethan Zhao, and welcome to the stage, Jessica Wan. <laughs> Hello, Jessica, welcome. Uh, tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I go to St. John's School in San Juan, and I'm in seventh grade. Now, uh, last year, <laughs> I got to ask you about your dogs, which was awesome. So this year, I thought you should get to ask me about my dogs. So we prepared some dog questions for you. <laughs> you may ask me one of those questions or choose one of your own. You may also choose to pass. Um, what type of dogs do you have? What a great question, thank you. <laughs> I have two dogs that are pit mixes. My dog Seamus is a Great Dane pit bull mix, and my dog Marlo is a Dogo Argentino American Foxhound Terrier mix. There are pictures of them on my Instagram nearly every day because I love them so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for your question. Fun fact about dogs, Every dog is the best dog. Jessica, test your buzzer. Uh, welcome back, Ethan. If you could give your buzzer a try. All right, I think we're all set. We're ready to go. Here is question number one. Samuel runs around a one mile track in 10 minutes, and Sophia runs around the same track in 10 and one half minutes. Assuming they continue running at their respective speeds, how many total miles will they run in 35 minutes? Express your answer, yes, Ethan. Six and five, six. Six and five, six is correct. <laughs> Ethan has a one to nothing lead, and here is question number two. How many elements of the set one ninth, two ninths, three ninths, and so on through 200 ninths can be, yes, Ethan? 22. Uh, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. And so on through 200 ninths can be written in the form of 3 sevenths k for some integer k. Jessica. Seven. Seven is correct. <laughs> we are tied up at one point apiece as we go to question number three. Two regular hexagons are shown in this figure. 
The outer hexagon has sides of length four inches, and each vertex of the interhexagon is one inch from the nearest vertex of the outer hexagon. What is the ratio of the area of the inner hexagon to the area of the outer hexagon? Yes, Jessica. 13 over 16. That is correct. <laughs> Jessica has two points, Ethan has one point, and here is question number four. The sum of the first 20 terms of a geometric sequence of positive terms is 1,025 times the sum of the first 10 terms. Yes, Ethan? Two. Two is correct. <laughs> We're all tied up at two points apiece, and here is question five. How many square units is the area enclosed by the graph of the absolute value of the quantity x plus y plus the absolute value of the quantity x minus y? Yes, Ethan? 64. 64 is correct. <laughs> We have a winner. Congratulations, Ethan, and thank you, Jessica. Please welcome back to the stage, Sam Wang, and please welcome to the stage, William Chen. Uh, welcome, William. Let's tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I go to William Hopkins Junior High School in Fremont, California, and I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. Now, it says here that you are extremely good at remembering details about places you have visited. I would love to know, what is the most interesting thing you remember about the Kennedy Space Center, which you visited yesterday? Uh, well, they have an IMAX theater, and, and it's located in Florida, and it's located near the coast in Florida. <laughs> Outstanding. Thank you very much. All right, Sam, let's give your buzzer a try. William, let's give your buzzer a try. I believe you're ready to go. All right, good luck to both of you. Here's your first question. For how many integer values of n from 1 to 100 inclusive is the value of 1 to the n plus 2 to the n plus 3 to the n divisible by 4? Yes, Sam. 49. 49 is correct. <laughs> Uh, Sam has one point, William has zero points, and here is question number two. The point P lies on the circle x squared plus y squared equals four, and the distance from P to the point four, zero, is three units. What is the x-coordinate of P? Express your answer as a common fraction. Ten seconds. Yes, Sam. Eight over five. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. William. Time's Seven up. over three. I'm sorry, the correct answer is 11 over eight. <clears throat> uh, the score is unchanged. Sam has one point, William has zero points, and here is question number three. In a list of seven integer values, the mean is 20, the median is 21, and the unique mode is 22. If the smallest value in the list is 15, what is the largest? Yes, William. 62. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. If the smallest value in the list is 15, what is the largest possible value in the list? Ten seconds. Sam. Thirty-seven. The correct answer is twenty-seven. <laughs> uh, our score has not changed. Sam has one. William has none. And here is question number four. What is the least positive integer n for which the square root of the quantity? Yes, Sam. Two hundred thousand. I'm sorry. That's incorrect. 
which the square root of the quantity n plus 1 minus the square root of n is less than 0 0.01. Ten seconds. <coughs> yes, William. Two four nine nine. I'm sorry. The correct answer is twenty five hundred. <laughs> Sam has one, and William has zero. As we move, do we move to another question? I'm un, I'm confused. I'm getting mixed signals. I'm going to go to the judges' table to find out what is the correct thing for me to say. Judges, fifth question. We have one final question here to reach five, which isn't true because we might go to sudden victory. Well, this is where I fell apart at 11:14 a.m. <laughs> All right, fellas. Here is question number five. Apollo divides the product of the odd numbers 1 times 3 times 5 and so on times the quantity n minus 2 times n by the product of the even numbers 2 times 4 times 6. Yes, Sam? 2. 2 is correct. <laughs> Congratulations, Sam, and thank you, William. Before I invite up our next uh, team of competitors, I just want to share an observation. Um, I see how excited and nervous and focused and intense all of you kids are. And I just want to observe that um, what you are doing is incredibly hard. And it is remarkable that you made it to this stage. Don't beat up on yourselves when you don't get it right. I know that you're doing the very best that you can, and I am so impressed and in awe of you kids. Please give all of the competitors a thundering round of applause. I'm a dad, and I'm incredibly proud of all of you, and I just hope that you feel that pride in yourselves as well. Let's please welcome to the stage Daniel Mai, and welcome back Rich Wang. <laughs> Daniel, please tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. Uh, I go to Raymond J. Gray Junior High School, and I'm in eighth grade. Uh, you said something unique about yourself is that you enjoy looking up facts that are of absolutely no use to anyone, which I absolutely love. Would you share with us a random fact? No. <laughs> that is a fair answer. Uh, would you maybe try out your buzzer? All right, I'm one for two. All right, uh, and Rich, let's give your buzzer a try. Great. All right, fellas. Good luck to both of you. Here we go with question number one. If the quantity x minus 1 over y equals 14 over 9, what is the value of the quantity x plus y minus 1 all over the quantity x minus y minus 1? Express your answer as a common fraction. Rich. 23 over 5. 23 over 5 is correct. <laughs> Rich has one point, Daniel's looking for his first point, and here comes question number two. Triangle ABC has AB equals AC equals 17 centimeters, and BC equals 16 centimeters. In the figure shown, the two circles are congruent, and each circle is tangent to two sides. Yes, Daniel? 18 pi. 18 pi is correct! All tied up at one point apiece. And here comes question number three. The sum of four positive integers is eight. What is the absolute difference between the maximum? Yes, Rich? Eleven. Eleven is correct. <laughs> Rich has two points. Daniel has one point. Here is question number four. 
How many ordered pairs of positive integers A comma B exist? Yes, Rich. 13. Uh, 13 is incorrect. How many ordered pairs of positive integers A comma B exist for which the square root of A plus the square root of B equals the square root of 288? Yes, Daniel. 11. 11 is correct and we are all tied up. Two points apiece. And here is question number five. Dario flips seven fair coins consisting of four nickels and three dimes. What is the probability that the total value of all yes rich? One over 16. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. What is the probability that the total value of all the coins that land heads up is exactly 35 cents? Express your answer as a common fraction. Yes, Daniel. One over eight. One over eight is correct. Congratulations, Daniel. I'm just doing a tiny bit of bookkeeping. Here we go. Great. All right. We are in our semifinals. There are new rules, which are on a different page here. <clears throat> Our first round of matchups are complete. We will now move on to, that's not right, the semifinals, where uh, the winners from our first round matchups have competed, and now I am on the right page. We have now reached the semifinals with only four students remaining with a chance to become the national champion. For the rest of the competition, our rules will change slightly. From this point on, to win a round, our mathletes will have to answer four questions correctly. Now, before we introduce our next matchup, I would like to ask the coaches of our four remaining mathletes to come on down to the front of the ballroom to watch the rest of the countdown round. Come on down, coaches. <laughs> And now, our first matchup of the semifinals. Please welcome Ethan Zhao and Suyash Pandit. <laughs> welcome back. Good luck to both of you. Let's give your buzzers a try first. Uh, Ethan and Suyash. Great. All right, good luck to both of you. Here is your first question. Here are the first 10 terms of a sequence in which each positive integer n appears n times. 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, and so on. What is the mean? Yes, Suyash. Seven. Seven is correct. <laughs> Suyash has one and Ethan has zero. And here is your next question. In the quotient 25 factorial over 15 factorial equals 1, 1, 8, 6, 1, 6, 7, 6, 2, A, B, 0, 0, 0. What is the product of the digits? Yes, Suya. Zero. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. What is the product of the digits represented by A and B? Ten seconds. Yes, Ethan. Twelve. The correct answer is 64. The score remains unchanged. Suyash has one, Ethan has zero. And here comes your next question. What positive integer value of n satisfies the quantity one cubed plus two cubed? Yes, Ethan. 35. Uh, 35 is incorrect. 
one cubed, plus two cubed, plus three cubed, and so on, plus n cubed all over yes, Suyash. 49. 49 is correct. <laughs> Suyish has two, Ethan has zero. Here is your next question. A square has vertices zero, zero, six, zero, six, six, and zero, six. Two lines intersect parallel sides of the square as shown and intersect each other at 10, zero. If the absolute difference between the slopes of the two lines is one ninth, what is the area in square units of the gray region inside the square and bounded by the two lines? Express your answer as a common fraction. Ten seconds. Suyush. 42 over 9. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Ethan. 14 over 3. 14 over 3 is correct. <laughs> Ethan has one, Suyush has two. Here is your next question. If W, X, Y, and Z are integers, and W equals X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared, how many possible values are there for W from zero to 20 inclusive? Uh, Ethan. 19. 19 is correct. And we are all tied up at two points apiece. All right, gentlemen, here is your next question. Drew plays a game in which he flips a fair coin until it lands heads up. If it first lands heads up, yes, Suyash. Two. Two is correct. <laughs> Suyash has three, Ethan has two, and here is your next question. A certain number has six digits when, exists, when expressed in base five. Exactly three digits are distinct and non-zero. The remaining digits are zeros, none of which are consecutive. What is the greatest possible value of this number in base 10? Yes, Ethan. 12785. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Ten seconds. Suyish. Uh, two nine nine six zero. I'm sorry. The correct answer is one two eight eight five. One two eight eight five. I've wanted to do a Trebek since I got up here, and it happened then. Uh, the score is currently three to two with Suyish in the lead. Here is your next question. In Anna's collection of snakes, 30% are striped and 70% are plain. Her most recent measurements yield an average length of 11 inches for all of the snakes and an average length of 13 inches. Yes, Ethan. Time has expired. Her most recent measurements yield an average length of 11 inches for all of the snakes and an average length of 13 inches for the plain snakes. What was the average length in inches of the striped, yes, Suyash? Six and one third. Six and one third is correct. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan, and congratulations, Suyash. Please welcome Sam Wang and Daniel Mai. Gentlemen, welcome to the semifinals. Daniel, would you please test out your buzzer? Excellent work, and Sam, good job. All right, good luck to both of you. 
Here is your first question. When 2019 factorial is expressed in base to... Yes, Sam. Three. Three is correct. Uh, Sam has one point, Daniel has no points, and here is your next question. The positive number n is odd and composite. If the sum of the digits of n is four, and none of the digits is zero, what is the sum of all possible values of n? Sam. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, two is correct. Sam has two points, Daniel has no points, and here is your next question. When the expression the quantity 2x plus the, yes, Sam? 216. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. When the expression the quantity 2x plus the quantity 3 over x all to the sixth is expanded, what is the constant term? Daniel. 4320. 4320 is correct. The score is Sam 2, Daniel 1, and here is your next question. A right circular cone with radius 3 inches and height 18 inches is cut parallel to its base to create a similar cone and a frustrum. Yes, Sam. 64 pi. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. If the smaller cone has height 12 inches, what is the volume of the frustrum in cubic inches? Express your answer in terms of pi. Ten seconds. Daniel. 38 pi. 38 pi is correct, and we are all tied up at two points apiece. All right, here is your next question. What is the probability that six rolls of a fair six-sided die result in exactly one occurrence of each value from one to six inclusive? Express your answer as a common fraction. Yes, Sam. Five over three, two, four. That is correct. <laughs> Everyone who watches me on tabletop knows that the odds of me rolling a one are 100. Uh, here is your next question. A rhombic dodecahedron is a polyhedron with 12 rhombi for its faces. How many vertices does this polyhedron have? Yes, Sam. 16. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Yes, Daniel. 14. 14 is correct. We are all tied up at three points apiece. All right, guys, here's your next question. If B and C are positive integers such that the square root of the quantity 11 plus the quantity B root C plus the quantity the square root of 11 minus the quantity B root C equals 6, where B root C is in simplest radical form, what is the value of B squared C? Sam. Um, 82. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. 10 seconds. Daniel. 49. I'm sorry, the correct answer is 72. All right. The tension in the room is palpable. I love it. 
The score is still tied at three. And here is your next question. A trapezoid with vertices 0, 0, 3, 1, 3, 8, and 0, 4 is divided by the line Y equals MX into two regions of equal area. Yes, Sam? 11 over 6. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. What is the value of M? Express your answer as a common fraction. Daniel. 11 over 2. I'm sorry, the correct answer is 13 over 6. We remain tied at 3. I feel like we're in double overtime. All right, here is your next question. If x is a positive real number, how many possible integer values are there for the square root of the quantity x squared plus 14x minus x? Sam. 15. I'm sorry, 15 is incorrect. Daniel. Two. I'm sorry, the correct answer is six. <laughs> you all know we're still tied? You guys have got this. Here comes your next question. Lindsay randomly selects two distinct days each week to go rock climbing at the gym. Jess randomly selects three distinct days each week to climb at the same gym. What is the probability that Lindsay and Jess will both be at the gym on the same day at least once in any given week? Express your answer as a common fraction. Sam. 360 over 2401. Uh, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Ten seconds. Daniel. 13 over 14. I'm sorry, the correct answer is five over seven. How about some thundering applause for these two competitors? We're all tied up at three. Here is your next question. Perfectly spherical drops of water of radius one millimeter drip out of a leaky faucet at a steady rate of 500 drops per minute. A perfectly cylindrical bucket of diameter 20 centimeters and height 30 centimeters is placed under the faucet. How many hours will it take the dripping water to completely fill the bucket? Sam. 1 over 12. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Time's up. Time has expired. The correct answer was 75 hours. Hey, everybody, we're tied at three. Here comes your next question. The first term of a sequence of positive numbers is one, and each subsequent term is 10 more than four-sevenths of the previous term. What is the 2019th term of this? Yes, Sam? 27.7. Uh, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. What is the 2019th term of this sequence? Express your answer as a decimal to the nearest tenth. Ten seconds. <laughs> Time's up. Time has expired. The correct answer is 
Here is your next question. How many simplified common fractions of the form A over, yes, Sam? Uh, one, two, seven. Sorry, time has expired. How many simplified common fractions of the form A over 2019 are there strictly between zero and one? Daniel. One, three, four, four. One, three, four, four is correct. Congratulations, Daniel. Thank you, Sam. Keep it going for these two incredible mathletes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage our two final competitors, the two students competing to be the 2019 national champion are Daniel Mai and Suyesh Pandit. <laughs> Suyesh, go ahead and try out your buzzer. Daniel, I feel you're familiar with your buzzer, but I'd like you to try it anyway. <laughs> Excellent work. All right, good luck to both of you. Here is your first question. In trapezoid TRAP with bases TR and AP, diagonals PR and AT intersect at Z, such that PZ to ZR equals two to five. If triangle TRP has area 35 square meters, what is the area of triangle A? Yes, Daniel. 14. 14 is correct. <laughs> Daniel has one, Suyish has zero. Here is your next question. A certain tree is on flat land, and Harley the hawk sits atop this tree so that Harley's eyes are 30 feet above the ground. Harley's keen eyes measure the distance to a mouse located on the ground directly north of her to be exactly 40 feet. Harley also measures the distance to a rabbit located on the ground directly west of her to be exactly 50 feet. How far in feet is the rabbit from the mouse? Express your answer in simplest radical form. Daniel. 10 root 23. 10 root 23 is correct. <laughs> Daniel has two, Suyush has zero. Here is your next question. A circular table has T seats. With 11 of the seats occupied, the table is not full, but each unoccupied seat is adjacent to an occupied seat. What is the absolute difference between the greatest and the least possible values of T? Suyash. 10. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Daniel. 21. 21 is correct. <laughs> Daniel has three points, Suyash has zero points. Here is your next question. What is the quotient of 5040 divided by the product of its unique prime factors? Yes, Suyash. Uh, 28. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Daniel. 24. That is the correct answer. Congratulations. Daniel Mai is your 2019 Raytheon Math Counts National Champion.